I'm um, recording now. Okay, well, welcome everybody to uh, this evening's uh, talk and sharing session. And uh, the topic this evening is how is healing helping or can help with anxiety, panic attacks, stress and depression. And we put this topic together um, and I think it's an ongoing conversation. So this evening, uh, we have three speakers with myself included, uh, sharing some of our thoughts and experiences and uh, practical hints and tips that, that may help someone that's going through this or help someone that's supporting someone going through this. Um, but I think this is part of a bigger conversation and it, I'd love to hear this evening, for those of you that are joining us live, your insights so that we can build this collective um, wisdom around all of this topic. But also if you're joining us in one of the recordings later, you know, however you're joining with us, whether it's on Facebook or um, on our YouTube channel, do put in the comments because we will keep checking this. Um, because this topic at the moment, I don't know what you guys are thinking and, and feeling, but it seems to be more and more relevant and there are more and more people experiencing these states, particularly younger generations. Um, one lady I was speaking to the other day, her nine-year-old is currently experiencing anxiety and panic attacks, and it's not uncommon. Um, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, I think, you know, things seemed less common. It might have been because we didn't have the labels. It might have been we just didn't talk about these things. But I think there's a general sense that these particular states are increasing for a variety of reasons. So tonight's talk is very much uh, sharing some practical hints and tips of how healing can support somebody going through this as a complementary um, tool or experience uh, to help promote that person's well-being. Um, I have to say, like we, we always do, um, the speakers tonight, we're not medical trained, we're not doctors, so always, you know, the advice that we always give, of course, is um, to seek medical attention if you feel that's right for you. Um, but what we are, um, we're all healers. And we also have different professions. So myself, I'm a coach, and I've been coaching for over 20 years, with a, a master's degree in coaching and behavioral change psychology. I'm a mental health first aider, and work a lot with transformational change, both in companies, but also individually. So I will add some, some thoughts to this topic tonight and some practical hints and tips on, on how I think um, some things that may be of use, they may not. And uh, I'd also like to introduce uh, Lynn Brodley, who herself is, is a healer, but also a counsellor and uh, a grief counsellor as well. So Lynn will be sharing some things from her experiences that may be helpful. And also Suzanne Brooker. So Suzanne, again, a healer and uh, a body talk practitioner and energy therapist. So Suzanne will start us off tonight, followed by Lynn, followed by myself, uh, sharing some insights and, and all the rest of it. And we'll finish this evening with um, a healing experience. And the hope being that with all the rest of the week, rather than just talking about some of this stuff, we're actually doing some of the stuff and you get to experience it. So if you're new to healing and you've never experienced it before, but you'd like to give it a go, tonight is uh, it's something you're invited to join. And if anything comes up for you during that session that you need further support in, we will be online afterwards and we're contactable as well through the Harry Edwards Sanctuary. So you can book in and have a one-to-one -one with us if you feel the need. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first 
speaker this evening. So Suzanne, if you can come off mute, I'll go on mute. And uh, if you can share with us tonight your thoughts about this topic. Thank you, Teresa. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting me to speak. Um, I love coming to these groups and the Cygnus groups. So I feel very grateful to be part of this space. Um, as Teresa said, I'm a body talk practitioner. Um, I teach mindfulness to children. Um, I used to do that in schools, but not so much now. Uh, I run meditation and healing groups. I teach healing and all sorts of different things come into that with the body talk practice. And I'm going to just talk to you a few, about a few really simple things that you can do to help you really focus on staying present without having to make extra time because we're, we're either saying we haven't got enough time because we're too busy or we just can't get ourselves into the right state to sit down and, and meditate. So I have some really easy tips and tricks that you can all access without actually making any extra time at all. And then I'm going to take you through one of the um, founding um, practices in body talk which is called the cortices technique, which is about um, balancing your brain. I'm going to get you all to, I invite you all to, to join me. You can if you like, and if you don't want to, that's also fine, but I'll explain more about that in a minute. So the first thing is if you look at how anxious everybody might be with what's going on in the world, and obviously people will suffer from anxiety and stress and managing that before the, the world went crazy. Um, I am noticing a real upward trend, like Teresa said, in teenagers, especially, and now younger children. Um, whether there's more or whether they're just more in a generation where they're talking about it, I'm not really sure, but they, they certainly need help. And there's not enough help in the state to act for them all to access. So it really is about finding, you know, the therapists and the healers for your children to work with. So one of the things that I teach, um, it's different depending on, on age or whether I'm teaching adults, but one really simple thing for everybody to access is just to think about the routine that you have, especially when you're first waking up in the morning. What we tend to do is we wake up on autopilot. Now autopilot's great because it, you create habits, it means that things can be easy to do. But what it also does, <clears throat> excuse me, is it doesn't allow your you, you to be present because you you go on autopilot and the things that you don't have to think about and then you're letting your monkey mind just wander about all your thoughts so as soon as you wake up often you know a lot of people will pick up their phone and start having a look and creating oh i've got to do this and i've got to do that and you'll get out of bed the same You'll, you'll do your first job the same as you do every day. You'll go and eat your cereal in the same chair with the same cup and bowl and have the same view out of the window. So something really simple to do is to get up and change your routine and do something different on purpose. Have your shower first. Go and have a, a, a sit in a different room or in a different seat and have a different view out of the window. It's just so that you're really present to what you're actually doing in that moment. That's really helpful. And you know, using your senses. So if you're making a cup of tea, be in in the action of making the cup of tea, listen to it, smell it. You can, you, can, you know, imagine the, the taste of it before you've even imagined it. So just go around your touch, taste, sight, sound and smell. If you have a shower, do the same thing. Feel the water, hear the water, smell it, shut your eyes, see what colours you're getting. Now, of course, your mind is going to keep wandering back into your thoughts just keep bringing it back. And it might feel like a really tedious thing to do, but after a while, your, your thoughts do slow down a little bit. They wander off and two, three minutes go by and you think, oh, I've gone back into overthinking. Just keep bringing it back and being present again and again and again. And try not to pick up your phone when you first get out of bed, because you know that's a habit that I've had to break myself because it, it plugs you straight into the day before you've even had a chance to wake up properly and just be present to whatever the day brings and allowing that to unfold um, for children a really good exercise when they're starting to freak out really is really simple it's just to get them to trace around their fingers 
they can when they're at school if they're getting anxious it just gives them something to focus on they can have their hand down by their side and just get them to keep tracing feeling the feelings of that around your fingers counting their fingers if they want to and then going backwards it just gives them something sensory to focus on and it takes their their mind out of that kind of panicked um, thought another thing is they could have a you know a stress ball to squash or you know adopting uh, simple habits um anything like that really it doesn't have to be your hand it could it could be anything making a shape on your leg just anything for a bit of um distraction so if i may i'm going to share my screen my very busy desktop can you all see that all right Okay, so the cortices technique in body talk is, is one of the ones that you can teach as a standalone technique. It takes your body out of fight or flight mode. Now, when you're an anxious person or if you're just sensitive, you can spend a lot of time in stress hormones. So this really helps to calm the nervous system and helps your body mind to go back into rest and digest. So in order for your body to heal, your body heals better when it's in the rest and digest mode. When you're in fight and flight, you've got a lot of stress hormones, um, cortisol and adrenaline running around your system. And you, although your body is also healing, then it's not doing a very good job of it because your blood has literally gone into your muscles into fight, flight or freeze. It's getting ready for some kind of action. So just doing the cortices technique it balances the left and the right brain and the left and the right body and improves your brain function and your mental clarity. It helps the communication of the hemispheres so that your body can start to literally rewire itself and start to really calm the nervous system down. This is a really easy technique for you to do on yourself or to do on someone else. So when I teach you this, you can either do it, if you're with somebody now, do it for each other or just practice it on, on yourself. So it brings about that sense of relaxation and well-being. Um, this is something that I've, you know, done with my own daughter. And when she was younger, she was just like, oh, I don't want to do, you know, what mum says. But then now she'll choose to do this herself when she can feel a panic coming on. She'll just sit and tap out of courses, which is really rather lovely. Um, so it just helps you, you to process it a little bit. It encourages you to breathe a little bit deeper, which also um, calms your nervous system down. And this supports um, body talk sessions as well. It comes in and out of the session. So I think probably the box is covering. I'm just going to come out of full screen for a second. Just make that bigger. That's better. OK, so we're going to start. So you get one of your hands and just pop it at the back of your head. So it's tucked in the nape of your neck there. And then with your other hand, just making sure you get both sides of your head, just gently tap on your head. Just take some nice, slow, deep breaths. Let's take a couple and then tap on your chest, just gently and then tap on your tummy. What this does is it gets your three brains involved, which I'll, in, I'll uh, explain to you in a second. Then you move your hand up to the next hand position, literally directly above where you were, tapping on your head, tapping on your chest, and then tapping on your tummy, remembering to breathe. And then moving your hand up again to the next space, tapping on your head. And tapping on your chest. And tapping on your tummy. And then move your hand down to cover. If, if you've, I've got quite a small head, so just make sure you're covering all the spaces. I've got to my forehead already. <laughs> so tapping on the top of your head. And your chest and your tummy and breathing this is quite nice to do on someone else as well if they're stressing out and then you put your hands on both sides of your head 
and just take one off. Imagine that the other hand is still on the side of your head. Take one off and tap on your head. Tapping on your chest. On your tummy. And then pop your hand back. And then swap hands. Some good yawning going on. So the yawning's releasing, as you all know, as healers. It's good. It's allowing your system to calm down and let go. And then tapping on your, on your tummy. Pop your hands back. It's good to have this visual on the recording because you can go back to it. So let's just stop sharing. So the, the three brains, so you've got your head brain, which is the... Um, the mental brain where all the habits are that it can't discern what's real or not just what your reality is so your own stress and trauma is all obviously very real but it's real to you everybody's different traumas are to have different triggers so it's just about trying to access what you need to do for yourself with your own stories and um, then you've got your heart brain the memory storage area we know all know the saying knowing something off by heart so it's just where you kind of store the, the feelings and emotion and your heart brain has as many, if not more neurons as your head brain. And then you've got your gut brain, which is called the enteric brain. This is where we process not just food, but thoughts and feelings as well. So a lot of people who suffer with um, tummy problems and IBS and things like that is usually because of a, um, a way of processing or not processing certain things so that's kind of how that how that comes about so um, this is a technique that you can add in whenever you like um, if you're uh, getting up in the morning you just want to get your your mind focused you can do the courses technique you don't have to be in a in a panic to access it. it's just a really good way to get focused if you find that you've been sat at the computer for too long even you can just get up and move about tap your courses out get yourself balanced um another thing that i wanted to mention now that we've coming out of lockdown is quite a lot of people have become what i'd call a bit institutionalized being at home quite a lot and it's then a bit daunting to go back out i know that a lot of children have struggled going back to school um <clears throat> just changing your routine at home so that you're changing the habits that you do like i explained at the beginning gets you thinking in the moment about different things so that when you go back out in the world you can just deal with whatever you're presented with it's quite often and especially because we've all been indoors an awful lot we've we've all got really kind of programmed into doing this this you know similar things each day so i know that there's been a lot of um people mentioning like yay we're getting out and then it's like oh actually I don't know if I feel confident enough to do that. So there's a, there are all sorts of simple techniques that you can do. So the, ma the main one really there as well is just to remember to use your senses, touch, taste, sight, sound and smell, whether you're cooking the dinner, having a shower, a bath, going for a walk. It's just really to be really present to what's going on around you. All right, so that's that's me for now. So I'm going to hand over to Lynn, I believe. Over to you, Lynn. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Yes, hello. Good evening. I'm I'm going to just um, talk briefly about um, how counselling can help people once they've had a spiritual healing experience. So um, the reason I, um, I'm, so I'm really passionate about helping people in normal times and certainly at the moment, it's a case of almost going out of your way beyond what you're supposed to do um, professionally because it's just such a difficult time for everybody. I've always been aware of different energies and I followed various healing development paths, as well as qualifying in all levels of Reiki healing and the National Federation of Spiritual Healers, which is now the Healing Trust. I later uh, trained um, to become a support volunteer with Crew's Bereavement Care. I had a very traumatic family situation to deal with. 
and Prue's bereavement were a big support after I fought with my doctor not to put me on tablets. I managed to see a <laughs> cruise supporter um, where I lived before. And that led me on to um, go and do counseling and psychotherapy and hypnotherapy um, and uh, dealing with integrated counseling. So I, I combine whatever I feel ne necessary at the time for the individual opposite me. Uh, because I thought before I get too old, I'll go and qualify in that so I can help other people other than people with grief. Although I do believe that most issues can arise out of unresolved grief earlier, whether it's even losing a cat and nobody, you know, at five and nobody thought it was anything wrong. It can store in um, a child and it can sort of... Um, create a path for that child that maybe wouldn't have happened had they had more compassion around them. So it's quite a complicated subject sometimes to um, digest all the aspects. Um, so my passion is to help um, empower others to help them heal themselves. I try and give them as many tools so that they feel confident to go on um, healing beyond having you know, rather than having two years of counselling, you know, you get them to do that themselves. And I do this using all my own experiences through life, um, my extensive training and my natural gifts that I have. So spiritual healing, as we, uh, some of us know, has a calming effect on all levels of the body, creating a contentment of peace and relaxation. In this state, your body can rebalance and change for the better. When this occurs, blocked emotion can shift and may stir old memories that have sat there for decades sometimes. And the person may not even know they've got anything wrong. They may be angry with people, but they think that's just how they are. And um, it's amazing what is stored in the body that you just don't realise in the way of emotions. This can present an ideal time to acknowledge any changes, be it positive or negative, after the healing. Past issues that no longer serve you may rise to the surface after spiritual healing. It may benefit you, therefore, to have some gentle counselling to help understand the effects that um, they may, you may have, um, they, sorry, that they may well be having, um, it may, may be affecting them now, sorry, that may have come up from this unconditional love that they have um, when they are receiving spiritual healing because it's beautiful. And when somebody's sort of sad, it can make them more emotional and that's when the um, negativity arises. The word spiritual originates from the Latin word spiritus meaning breath of life. The breath of life is within us thanks to our heart constantly beating unconditionally thus allowing our amazing body to work effect efficiently as a whole being. Negative emotions can sit at the cellular level of our body until we work at letting them go. As new cells multiply in the body, they can take old emotional messages with them unless the old messages are no longer there. And there's quite a lot written about that. And so um, if you carry positive um, emotion instead of negative emotion, it stands to reason that your body will ultimately be happier, less stressed and suffer less bodily discomfort because it can cause, you know, if you're tense and your muscles are tense and it can lead to some illnesses. I'm not saying all the time, but it, you know, it is known that stress can cause problems in the physical body. Counseling can also um, help bring enlightenment, enlightenment on it. Sorry. Counseling can help bring enlightenment on painful issues that may arise following the unconditional spiritual healing experience you have received. 
the difficult time we have all experienced in our own way during the coronavirus lockdown and beyond has likely increased any normal challenge in our path. Ordinarily, when you have something to deal with, you, you may become concerned and perhaps a bit anxious as we all do sometimes if you're having a bad day, um, that you can't solve a problem. However, at this time, this is having a tendency, as um, Suzanne just mentioned, you know, people are struggling much more now um, to develop into anxiety. And this brings on occasional panic attacks. Depression can also develop if um, somebody starts to shut down from challenges because it's easier and in order to avoid any stress so they can cut off, but then they're not, um, that's not a good place to be in either. Minor and major mental issues can develop from decades of difficult life experiences. It is not always clear about how you might have reached a stage in life where you are not coping very well. For example, your perception of something that may have happened to you when you were younger may have caused you to have a lack of self-worth, causing you to feel unable to achieve very much later on in life because you've carried that for decades. And there are things like post-traumatic stress disorder where you may have um, experienced trauma when you were much younger and it just sat there and that people around the, the young person that you were then didn't realise what effect it had on you. And there's obsessive compulsive disorder where, again, it's sort of the habit um, that has developed. It, it's so bad that the person can't step outside of that to normalise themselves as other people are. So this, there's all sorts of um, conditions which I won't go into, but I'm sure they may come up in the um, chat afterwards. So counselling can assist you in discovering the beginning of a difficult emotional earlier experience so that you can now understand why you are feeling like this. It is rather like removing layers of an onion, one layer at a time. It can be liberating and self-empowering to go on a journey of such discovery and let go of what no longer serves you and leave you in a much happier and more content place. If you are then happier and more content, others around you may also benefit. So if you've got a family who you've got, um, I don't know, if you've got a family that you're really struggling with and they are not helping you and you don't feel they're valuing you enough because of what you've been through before, it can be an, an uphill struggle. So if you're able to um, see somebody um, to talk to them and work out what may be sitting underneath causing all that misery for that person, um, it's, it's like a whirlpool because when that person is happier, all the family around them notice that and the energy changes and everybody else is happier. So you're, you're helping other people if you have counselling, not just yourself. Stressful situations can also apparently lower the immune system. Being positive can assist one's well-being and good health. So as we come into a new time following the challenging COVID of the past year, it might benefit you to be aware of others' needs as well. Currently, we are struggling to adapt to what we think is normality. And sometimes it's easy to forget that another person may be going through um, trying to normalize themselves and you're trying to normalize yourselves and misunderstandings can occur. So showing compassion towards someone, even if you think they are not behaving as they should, it's, better, it's a better experience um, to show compassion than becoming angry or irritated with them 
because we do not know what they have been through this year or previous years. This past year has brought to the surface individual grief that has gone before, especially if they have lost someone to this, at this time to COVID or other ailments. It may well have highlighted other struggles along the way for all of us. And um, before this happened, I was um, obviously seeing people face to face and I do cruise bereavement work, as I mentioned earlier, and suddenly we had to use, do it by phone. Fortunately, I'd had the phone training um, the summer before, so that was lucky um, that we have to have. And um, it, it was very difficult for people to accept that, but they were grateful to have that rather than nothing. And because I had to listen more and I couldn't watch um, their body language, it's very interesting because you can hear in the voice a lot more than you realise until you just listen to the voice. So, so that was an interesting project. Um, but we, you know, there are people who um, have lost people. As we all know, in hospital, there's been no closure and they're living with that. They couldn't say, say cheerio to them or the people suddenly went when they shouldn't have done. And um, what, what has been happening is because people are not going out and about and they are feeling their own grief, you know, various people have said, I can't understand why my neighbour can't just be kinder to me and ask if I'm okay, or my friends stay in the street avoid me and don't actually speak to me. And I had a situation the other day and I had to explain to her that, um, they, that she may not know what they've gone through. And when people are just surrounded with such heavy grief, they can't work that sort of thing out. She was very grateful because she hadn't thought about it. So that way it makes it easier if she goes down into the village and, you know, somebody crosses the road, which is what happened, uh, and it just made her feel worse. So, you know, it's, it's, it's thinking of things. So if you come across anybody who's been in a sim similar situation, you could sort of gently point it out to them maybe. And um, also you have people who um, are on their own and obviously couldn't see families and they were grieving about what they couldn't do and what they haven't been able to do in the last year that they normally do um, be with their friends. Um, and certainly when I've been doing um, cruise bereavement work or counselling, I have been going the extra mile and I mean normally in this situation you get people to do their own research so that it's better their, their autonomy comes into action and it makes them feel good they're able to research something but a lot of the time they couldn't because nothing was open so I was sort of having to look at the computer at the same time as council to try and find out what they needed and they were just so grateful and it's lovely to have people feeling as if you know they really benefited from it and make a difference to them and a difference to all the people around them. And the other thing, of course, is people's fear from the injection. Um, a lot, you know, quite a few people have had responses, which has knocked their confidence again. And um, it's almost like it's another thing that they don't know and can't have any control over. So I'm just pointing out all these things to remind us that, you know, sometimes we haven't got the um, patience or we're having a bad day but it just if you meet somebody just remember you don't know what they've been through either and it, it's a nice energy to be in it's calmer than going towards somebody and thinking you know <laughs> so um yes yeah, so also feeling feeling gratitude you know counting one's blessings daily for all of us um, if possible, that lifts the spirits because you, you may get to the end of the day and you're exhausted. Uh, but if you think what has been good about today, it, it stops you feeling quite so sort of low if sometimes because we, we have to accept that most of us have low times for no reason. It's just that we are all sensitive who are here this after this evening and whether we like it or not, it's not just the television, the radio, the newspapers. You, you can't help but feel for places like India. You, it's almost like 
um, you can feel the grief from here. So, you know, we do have to lift ourselves in some way to um, do this. And something, you know, just a few ways of um, helping yourself and others, like um, if you want, you know, you could telephone somebody sometime and say, I was remembering what we did before and I was really grateful for you doing that because it will help them to feel valued. And also it's a nice energy for you to pass that on to them. And um, what else have we got here? Other ways to help for all of us is, ex is experiencing nature and nurture. Walking through our wonderful countryside can be very uplifting, especially as spring is here. That's when we have the warmth to go with it, of course. And for those who are lucky enough to have a garden, that is also a very natural experience, um, a bit of exercise and to stand and listen to the bird song, which is amazing again this spring. The NHS the other day announced that they have now recognised fishing as being a mental issue um, solving practice. So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> 50 years ago, people just used to go fishing all the time, but it, you know, it's not such a popular thing now. So it's good that they're looking at nature as well, the doctors are. And for those unable to have um, privileges or the privileges of the garden um, and going fishing um, or are unable to walk, because we have to remember those, um, you know, they hopefully they can have access to these amazing nature programmes that are on at the moment, not just David Attenborough. There's a lot of um, programmes on every day set in this country so people who are stuck indoors still they can watch that sort of program for upliftment so if if somebody's a bit low you could sort of suggest that for them and they've probably got views of other gardens anyway from their window remembering to breathe correctly so um when you go to bed at night if you just before you finally go to sleep and you've finished reading or doing whatever, if you just lay and breathe in really deeply um, to the count of eight, and so you breathe in um, calm, and then you breathe out five, letting go of anything that you didn't want during the day. And if you do that three times, it brings oxygen into your body as well, and that helps you sleep more. And when you breathe, if you just breathe really slowly and deeply, try and breathe from the bottom of your lungs if you're able to, or even if you can visualize breathing from the base of the spine and bringing the um, oxygen right up the spine and relax the spine as you breathe. Drinking at least the recommended two litres of water or tea or coffee, as long as you have the liquid, that's not including any alcohol. I heard a story the other day of somebody who got high blood pressure and I knew that she liked her red wine before. And I did mention, I did say, because um, I know her enough to say that, I did say, you know, maybe it's time to just not have as much um, alcohol and drink more water but that went straight over her head because she went to the doctor and had the tests and everything and he said you're not drinking enough water so it's something you know it's very easy for people to drink a bit extra just to get through this awful time that's still here you know they're opening up everything but people are still fearful of what's going on out there I noticed it today in the street a couple of people I met um, and they're yes they're not as quite as relaxed as they would want to be. Uh, but yes, it's just something to be aware of if you've got anybody um, just to not tell them not to drink so much, but <laughs> maybe maybe just encourage them to remember to drink at least two litres of um, liquid a day. And treating um, yourselves or other people to um, small cakes and things, just something different, you know, just a little treat um anything that lifts you really even if you have one a day it just you know 
highlights the uh, value of being able to have that choice compared to other countries. I mean, we're, we're just so lucky in this country for the systems we've got and the um, medical support compared to Africa. We're not hearing much about Africa yet, but that's not very good either. We've got India, which is the biggest one because of the 1.3 billion people they've got, which is horrendous. Um, but yes, we are very lucky here and it's good to remember that every day. And the fact that we have got our health, even if we've had COVID and we're not still quite right, then at least we are okay now and, you know, very grateful. And small things again, like watching comedy to make you smile and laugh, because that's very good for you. Dancing around the kitchen to music on the radio, doesn't matter if anybody sees you anyway. <laughs> and singing as well, singing is very good for you. And lastly, only do what you absolutely have to do and not non-essentials if they pressurize you too much. And I use a statement that does it matter in the bigger agenda? Because if it doesn't, you know, just just have a restful day if that's what you want and go out for a walk. And it's it's a case of really taking care of yourself so you can be there for others, just like the air hostess does when they put on their life jacket first to help others get off the plane. So thank you very much. That's me finished. I hope you all have a good evening. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lynn. I just, um, just when you were talking there about, um, you know, connecting with music and uh, all these external things that we could be tapping into, you just reminded me of a few years ago, I was going through quite a tough time going up to the top of my car because a friend suggested just go get in your car and scream your head off mm -hmm. so I did I made sure no one was around and you know what it was one of the best things mm. ever just to get that you know like you do with singing I guess I, I try not to sing too much because I, I don't have a great voice but if no one's around or if I'm in the shower or there's a big group of us mm. then uh, that disguises my uh, my singing voice but I do love to sing but that screaming in a car, no one around, it was such a release. Uh, and um, I think, you know, with some of these things, you know, particularly when we're talking about anxiety, panic attacks, stress and depression, uh, some people might start, you know, particularly if you live with this stuff for a while, and the way that it can be described in, in our current times, particularly in the Western world, sometimes it can kind of get caught up with your own identity. And I think one of the first things I just want to share today that anyone's going through this stuff or you're supporting somebody that's um, having this in some shape or form is that you are separate. You are you, you have your own identity um, and if you have um, a spiritual nature, you know, an insight into that or, or not, um, either way, you are bigger than the sum of your experiences. And these are just experiences that you're going through. Um, I've had the privilege of working with people uh, that have experienced high anxiety, depression, um, panic attacks, stress to the point that you know sometimes they just feel they're in so much pain they don't want to be here anymore and you can understand that I'd say the most important thing is to be able to go and connect with somebody and to release whatever way that is you know screaming in the car is one thing um, offloading getting things out is another but this is temporary Sometimes it may go on for a period of time, but like all things with emotions and emotional states, um, I studied neuroscience for a while and speaking to um, the teacher there, she was sharing with us that we change our emotional states every four seconds. And sometimes we're not cognizant of that or conscious of it. And I think as time goes on, I would love 
in schools or wherever, um, that we're teaching more about the um, insights into our emotions and, and what they're doing for us and serving us in all different ways. And I love that movie. I can't remember the name. You all know it. Type it in the chat. You know, you've got the four little emotions. You've got anger and they've got little characters. Um, yeah, we're all thinking now. You, you'll know who I'm on about. Um, and what this movie shows us is that all the emotions play a part. There are no bad negative emotions. Thank you. Yeah, inside out. Brilliant. Um, they're all serving us in certain ways, but sometimes we're experiencing more than we'd like to, more than um, maybe our well being uh, wants us to experience. So as a coach, we are very much as coaches focused on the present. Where are we now and what serves you for moving you forward? And whilst it can be incredibly important to go back and uh, look and analyze and unpick, that's all incredibly useful. Um, the focus of my segment today will be talking about where are you currently and how can you move forward with increased well-being balance so you can experience life in the way that you want to and that may be um, experiencing less anxiety, less stress, less depression and focusing on more what you would like to be experiencing. So just thinking in your mind now what is it that you'd like to experience more of? Is it more love, more joy? It may be more depression. Um, and I laugh there with utter respect. Um, you know, it's, 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 it, in a way, some of this stuff is a choice. And you might be thinking you're crazy. How can you say me feeling depressed, me feeling anxious is a choice? Well, some of the things I'm going to go on to share in a minute will, will hopefully uh, give you some insights in how you can get some control of this stuff so that you can have more of an influence on your emotional states than, than you may have imagined to date. Before I get into that, though, I just want to also touch on that you are greater than the sum of your experiences and to give focus to all your characteristics and what makes you you and the type of life that you want to live. And there's a lovely uh, thought experiment that you could do, which is very much imagining yourself in a movie as the main character and seeing how that movie is going to unfold in, in the days to come. What experiences is it that you'd like to have? And just watch your character go through and inject the kind of things that you'd like to have. And just by doing that visualization, it starts to develop your faculty for visioning and controlling what we call the mind, um, which is more than just the brain and engaging. You know, it's a bit like driving a car. You know, when we're born with this human body, you know, no one ever gives us the manual, do they? You know, we kind of jumped into it. And, you know, as a kid, we think we kind of know it all and, you know, experience life how we want to. Then the teenage years hit and we have all the chemicals and all of that going on and all the chemistry's changing, the brain structure's changing. And then as adults, you know, we go through our experiences, but nobody ever tells us the manual. And the hope for the talk today is to give you some glimpses and insights into some things, you know, that might be talked about the cortices, which is fantastic. One of the other things is to develop this capability of getting control of the mind and connecting it with the heart. Particularly in the Western world, we can get cut off sometimes we talk about intellectual studies, logic, rational thinking, all of that. That's all important, but we're not just that. We are whole, we're whole beings with big hearts. And uh, Suzanne talks about the three brains. And sometimes what can happen 
is if we shut down the connection with our heart intelligence and our embodied intelligence, then things can start to um, escalate and we, we get hijacked by emotions because they're not having a voice. And one of the techniques that I use with uh, coaching clients when they're experiencing um, being hijacked really by their own emotions, all sorts of emotions, this works for, is just for a moment, hand to the heart and just checking in. So turning the gaze within and just asking the heart, what is it you want to share with me? What can you tell me? What am I not listening to? Because we're so junked up in the head. The heart intelligence through an institute called HeartMath, it's a charity and also a company, do a huge amount of research in this area. So if that's intriguing for you, I definitely recommend that you go and, um, sorry, the light's coming through the window at the moment, we've just got the sunset happening here. So apologies for that if it's a bit distracting. Um, all the research around heart intelligence shows that the heart has 40,000 neurons, it stores memory, stores emotion. And sometimes just connecting with the heart and allowing it to release, nothing to solve. Again, it's another release, like me screaming in the car and letting those things out. One is talking to the heart. Another is um, embodied intelligence. Again, getting out with just the head and coming fully into the body and just noticing within the body anything your body would like to share with you. And while you're at it, it might be, if it feels right for you, your own inner wisdom or your higher spirit, if that feels okay. And all of these dimensions are all part of you, but sometimes they can get shut down, shut off. And an expression of anxiety, depression, stress can be the only way that you can fully speak to yourself. One technique I was shown just to develop this capability, uh, Suzanne and, and Lynn both spoke about this presence business. You hear that a lot. And a lot of people are like, what is it? Well, you know, a lot of times we are so caught up in our own heads, either worrying about things that happened in the past or feeling sad or monastrating ourselves or reliving things, all sorts of things. Some things didn't actually happen that way. And, and we're, we're reliving things in not a great way that is evoking in us the same stress chemicals, the same, um, as Suzanne put it, you know, the flight or fight chemicals as when it happened originally. And yet we're doing this in the moment and we all experience this. It's, it's a, a normal uh, thing that we do. But when we're caught up in that and, and equally we can do it with the future, you know, worrying about what's happening in the future, making up all sorts of assumptions making up what we think others think of us. Very often when we get to the heart and truth of something, it's never quite as we're imagining, or it could be very far removed from that, just because of the way that our brains are structured. The neuroscientist lady that I spoke about, she described our brains as negative, predictive machines. You just think, gosh, negative, predictive machines. That's what we've all got. And so it takes a bit of effort and a little bit of rejigging so that we can work with the machinery that we have inherited. And I think once you understand that, the reason why our brains are the way they are, back in the saber-toothed tiger days and all the rest of it, you know, we, we needed to be on high alert. Um, and to be able to spring into action uh, in the ways that our ancestors would have done during the hunter-gatherer times. And of course, we still need that faculty. But when we over-exercise the faculty, you know, which is all around the amygdala, and the amygdala gets heightened and hyper-alert, 
that can be when your security system is going into overdrive and then it is no longer serving you. It is providing a disservice, even though it thinks it's providing a good protective service for you. So an antidote to that is to develop your capability for presence. The Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhan, Nhat Han, I can never say his name fully properly, um, but he you know, shares so much wisdom, you know, as do a lot of the Buddhist teachers and, and religious teachers around the world. Um, but his, one of his lovely phrases that's always stuck with me is when you're fully present, you can only be at peace. And I love that because, you know, as long as you're in a safe environment, obviously, if there's a saber tooth tiger on the prowl, you know, don't be in that state, be in flight or fight, get out of there or sort it out. You know, that's what your, your body is designed to do for you. But when you're in a safe environment, you can be fully at peace and very present and joyous, even though you've had all sorts of challenges in your past and you've got all sorts of concerns of the future. And this is the stuff where I think, you know, tonight's talk about how healing can benefit all emotional states, but in particular these challenging ones that are so easy for our negative predictive machines to hook into and to bring to the fore. Um, and so in a moment, I'll, I'll take us through why I think certain things that we learn as healers could be very applied to everybody and for you to utilize that right now and going forward. I just want to share a quick story about um, the idea of, of uh, state management. So I don't know if anyone's come across that term before, but uh, emotional states and managing our states. A lot of people would view anxiety as a state. It isn't a mental health disorder. It is an emotional state. And I don't think enough conversations have gone into that. And it just seems to me, if we're more equipped to manage our states and develop our faculty for that, like any other skill, like running, visualizing, creating art, all of those kind of things, um, then it will help in some way to managing that and focusing on the states and accessing the states that we do want. I worked with a young girl about a year or two ago, oh, it would have been yeah, over two years ago now, actually. Um, and she was only 24. Uh, it was very um, professional lady working for a wonderful company in a good role, very respected uh, for what she did. And she came to me this one day in a confidential coaching session. And she described, you would never know, she, she was just the way she presented herself. She was very smiley and calm. And then she went on to share that for the past few years, uh, she'd experienced severe panic attacks, depression, stress, and anxiety altogether. She had agoraphobia at some point, claustrophobia at another. And this had all really kicked in from the age of about 13, 14 into um, adulthood. And she was really at the end of her tether, so much so that she was contemplating really ending her life at the age of 24. Beautiful girl. She was the only child um, of a loving, loving family. And she went on then to describe the horror of living in her life. As a coach, it was very hard to hear that. All I really wanted to say was, oh, you know, um, if you carry on with the way that you are, what a shame, what a shame that the world doesn't get to experience you. Brings tears to my eyes, thinking about it now, that any one soul on this planet ever feels that way. And this is why 
tonight's talk is important and more of these kind of talks I think you know with a lot of people who are in the audience tonight will be able to add a lot to this conversation in very practical ways. She'd been in um, all sorts of, she'd explored lots and lots of support that had been helpful in some shape or form, but it hadn't quite resolved things for her. So there we were, we had an hour and she just shared this with me before we went back to work. So what did I share with her? Have you heard of state management? No, I haven't. Okay, do you wanna give this a go? We gave it a go. She jumped in fully and uh, I was very impressed by her creativity and her ability just to give it a go. Open, curious. And together then we jumped into what I'm going to share with you. And I know she won't mind me sharing this, but afterwards I said, how would you like to name what we've just experienced today? What would you like to call it? And she said, so that we could refer to it and evoke it in future. And she could evoke this state whenever she would like to. She said, I'd like to call it calmly joy. <laughs> and that word, that, that phrase has stayed with me and that was what was important for her. So what I'm gonna share with you now is we're gonna go into a state of calmly joy, if that feels comfortable for you. If you'd like to add more to it, so peace, maybe you don't want calmly joy today, you might want peace or increased love or whatever it might be, then do feel free to kind of bring in those terms, but just for the sake of today's experiment and sharing with you guys, I'll, I'll keep it at that level, but you, you do what is right for you. Okay, so, if I can all invite you to um, close your eyes, if that feels comfortable, you can keep your eyes open if you'd like to. And only engage with this to the level that you're comfortable with and just slightly beyond. And as we're going through it, I will also relay how this relates to healing because as healers, we are taught and we develop this skill to move our state from one minute, you know, particularly if you come to the sanctuary, one minute we might all be herring around, panicked, doing all sorts, you know, with juggling, doing whatever we're doing. But when we move into the healing state, and we can do that within less than a minute, we move into the state that's required for healing. And again, like I said, it's just a skill anybody can do this you just need to learn it and the reason that we're able to do that is because we're taught something called grounding centering and attuning so I'll, I'll, I'll bring that into the experiment today so rather than me just talking you get to experience it and then if you'd like to at the end I'll share some healing Again, only engage if it feels comfortable with you. And that will bring us into the big heal, which is going on this week during Healing Awareness Week. So just as you're starting to center and ground yourself, just want you to focus on your breath for a moment and getting very present. And the breath is a wonderful way just to bring your awareness into the moment and also into the body. And the deeper and more conscious your breathing, the better for today's purpose. And just notice the coolness of the breath and that with every breath out, just invite your full being to release anything no longer serving. And as we do this, I just want you to now focus and draw your awareness down to your feet so that we feel very grounded. And to strengthen that groundedness, you can almost imagine 
like a flower with roots into the ground or a tree. You're just anchoring your connection with the earth. You may even feel your feet magnetically connected. And as you do that, you can imagine maybe the energy coming up or some sensations coming up through the body. Could be just the pressure of your feet connecting with the ground. The important thing is your awareness is this magnetic connection with the feet and the ground. One technique also that can be very useful for getting us very present, it's not often spoken about, but it's about drawing liquid saliva into the mouth. So with a breath in, just drawing in, invoking now liquid saliva in the mouth. And this is a signal and almost a like a button to move your body into a safe rest and digest state. And with this now, just notice how you are fully inhabiting your body. You live fully in your body. We don't just live in our heads, just imagining a light fully inhabiting from the tip of your toes to the top of your head. And now this light is radiating within you and a bit like the ready breath adverts, radiating out. We're just gonna allow that to continue as I invite your imagination now to engage in managing the state and accessing the state of calmly joy. I'd like you to imagine ahead of you, there is an orb, a bubble, and it's coming towards you. And it's just ahead of you now, growing bigger and bigger, and just big enough that you can see it clearly. And as you start to focus on the bubble, I'd just like you to imagine the colour of the bubble and just watch it as it's gently moving. Now this bubble isn't an ordinary bubble, this is your bubble. And therefore you can inject into this bubble anything you require. Any of the emotional states. And so now I'd invite you to inject in calmness, joy, anything else that is helpful for you. You can inject the words in or colours, symbols. And just notice how the bubble starts to morph. And when you're happy with your bubble, you may even want to call it something. But when you're happy with it, and this is the state that you'd like. When you're ready, allow the bubble to come towards you and fully immerse you. So safely, 
with full protection. You are fully immersed in this beautiful bubble. You can feel the light resonating fully around you and within you. And if you like to, you can inject some laughter, humor, peace, tranquility, nourishment, anything your heart's desire. Just check in with your heart now. And allow your heart to add in anything to this wonderful bubble. And this is one way to move in from one state to another. And while we're here, it would be a perfect time to step into our healing state if you'd like to join me. Very simple. as we build a wonderful healing light within us. It could be any color you choose. Just want you to imagine a column of light, fully connected with earth and source. Your bubble may change color. And in here now, we are evoking the wonderful healing, love, peace. And any other states that we would like for ourselves to be fully resourced in top to toe, feeling that wonderful energy. And then also what we are going to send to others here this evening and all of those around the planet. And imagining now all our bubbles connected, creating a giant, beautiful bubble of light. And every time we do this, every breath in, the light is getting brighter. And fully resourcing you first. before emanating and sharing more broadly. At all points, you have full resources, full light. You are only sharing any excess. And imagining the world now immersed in this wonderful bubble. And as you start to imagine that, fully connected with your heart, just sending love, peace, light. To all those across the planet, including yourself first. Loved ones. Those across the planet, human, animal, any living being, 
plants, trees, all of nature. And just remembering that you can access this state within four seconds, any time. It is always here for you. And in particular, given the time that we're at at the moment, our thoughts are with, thoughts of healing for all of those, particularly in India, for all of those across the planet that are struggling from COVID, from all other things. And we imagine that all beings on the planet have full health and well-being. We are now linking our bubble with the big heel. And there are many across the planet sending their lights. And we are all connected, like little comets of lights jetting around. I'll just go quiet for a moment, just so you can really connect with that wonderful energy. Wonderful. And now as we're starting to come back, I just want you to start to come back and just focus now on your own bubble and your own self for this moment. And while you're in this healing energy, take the opportunity for a minute just to check in with yourself. How are you? It's okay not to be okay. Accepting fully, you are bigger than your experiences. We all experience a vast array of emotions and you are fully equipped, no matter the challenge, no matter the struggle, to become present at peace and joyful. And just for a moment, give yourself the biggest hug and unconditional love. Everything that you require to feel whole healed and fully accepting of who you are, knowing that you were born fully equipped, fully resourced and perfect just as you are right now. Everything else is experience. Things are temporary. Reality can be an illusion. Use your faculties for an increased sense of balance, well being.
And when you're with another who is going through a challenging state, move your state into one that is resourceful for them. Naturally, this will provide a resourceful and beneficial state. And when you're ready, and we're starting to come back into the room, just register anything that was pertinent for you for today from this session, either from things that has been shared and equally anything that's cropped up for you. Do share with us your wisdom. And as we're starting to come back into the room, bringing your attention back to your breath, drawing in the liquid saliva, it's a very good way to get present and to move into rest and digest. Focus your feet on the floor so we're very grounded. And just gently Draw that bubble close and start to bring your energy in and gently fold and close the way that's right for you. So you're fully present, fully focused and in this moment. Another good way is to drink a glass of water as well as breathing or liquid saliva because that gets us back into the body, as is moving the body, starting to smile or do some facial expressions, you know, feel, you know, you're, you're here, we're in the moment, and, and nice to see everybody back in the room. Do just be careful if you do get up that you are grounded. Uh, sometimes we get a bit clumsy when we're not grounded. So the things that we just covered there was grounding, centering and attuning. And these things as a healer, we, we spend many years developing, but they can be accessed very, very quickly, very naturally. Happy to share more about that another time. But we hope this session today has been useful in, in, um, in all sorts of ways. And um, anyone like I said, that is going through this, I love the way that um, I was watching an old actor many years ago and he was sharing that he um, suffered with depression for many, many years and still had it. You know, it's just something that he would experience from time to time. But the way that he described it was sometimes my mood would be low. I'm on an ebb and a flow. I have good days, I have bad days. It's just the way it is. And I find that there's something quite empowering about that because it kind of shows that emotions are a bit like the tide and we can be affected by all sorts of reasons. Some we're very cognizant of, others not so much. And um, it can be useful to find out the reasons. It can also be very useful to accept where you're at so that you can fully then find ways to move you forward and manage this full body and machinery that we have. All right, so um, any final words, Suzanne, Lynn, that you'd like to share just as we're starting to wrap up this segment and moving on to Q&A. And that's where we'll invite everyone in the audience to share your hints and tips. Um, and because uh, I know, I can feel it actually, I can feel you all bubbling. That I know we're going to come out with some gems tonight um, that, that will be useful for people. If I could just um, say thank you, that was wonderful. 
Theresa. Um, just one very quick comment that out of this evening, you all may find that things start to come up because of the very subjects that we covered this evening. And I always term them as bubbles of champagne because they're gifts. And as they come out, you can think about them and just be glad it's happened and just send them out with love and let go of them. That's my final piece. Lovely, thank you. And Suzanne? It's just really <clears throat> to access present moments during the day, try and create some habits around it, even if it's only a little bit each day, because then that stops things escalating into you know, massive problems. So I always describe it when you when you access mindful presence, your your mind will still wander back to your troubles and it does get easier the more you practice it. But if you just allow your mind to carry on wandering around your your problems, it's like a snowball running down a hill eventually you can turn into an avalanche. Whereas for me, I always describe it, keep it at the snowball. You'll have a snowball running and then you put a spoke in the wheel almost. So don't allow it to turn into like bigger feelings because it's the build up of that and being constantly in fight or flight that end up with your adrenal glands kind of giving in and you just spend your whole time constantly exhausted and anxious because you haven't got the energy to do anything different with it so it's just just making things simple really really simple as much as possible you don't have to make extra time you don't have to do anything other than just be present to what you're doing yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Suzanne. You just reminded me as well. You know, I think a lot of people uh, that are sensitive in, in the sense that, you know, they're either healers or interested in healing or that kind of stuff. You know, I should add, all of us have experienced these states. Uh, so we are we are talking from a position of experience and um, not only from the professional side but also ourselves and the more that I work with different sensitives and um, it's part and parcel of who we are and uh, the more equipped we are then we can cater for it and manage it when those things arrive that we, we um, don't want to experience and uh, so I hope that's a hopeful talk for this evening. Uh, I'd just like to finish on whatever you're going through, it is temporary. Everything, you know, I think that, you know, this is the lovely phrase that I'm, I'm going to completely muck up now, but, you know, even the storms get tired. Um, so, you know, hold on to that, accept who you are. You are more than your experiences. If you're going through a storm, you're going through a storm. It's okay, you will get through it. And there's lots of support there for you. Um, and that you're bigger than the sum of your experiences. We change our emotional states every four seconds. If you have depression, I am depressed. That's the phrase. It's the worst thing you can say. I am, I am depressed. No, I am Teresa. I am going through, I'm on a low ebb. I'm going through some depression. But you won't be depressed all the time. No one can maintain depression 24-7. Um, if you really look at it, through that depressive period, you will have glimmers of joy, love, all the other emotions. You're just not paying attention. So... Uh, Give yourself a break, focus on um, all the emotions that you want, accept the ones that are coming up for you that maybe aren't where you want. And um, overall, it's temporary, it, it will pass. All right, we're gonna stop talking now and open it up. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys, either in the chat um, we're all quite shy, so um, you know if 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 you're shy but you want to say something, I'd encourage you to. Um, but if that's a bit too much for you tonight, pop it in the chat because I'm sure whatever you're sharing, it will land with one, if not all, uh, the people in the group this evening. 
I'll stop recording now. Feel free to talk. <laughs>